<laughs> hey, check this out. Cab bound all the way from Iowa. You know, we're back on Cabotogamo Lake and we come up here every year. Just a beautiful lake. I really like the people up here. We're staying at Idlewild Resort this time. We've stayed at a lot of different resorts. There's some beautiful resorts on this lake. Once you get away from the resorts, it's just all undeveloped Canadian Shield looking water. And we're back out here. It's early in the year. You know, we're anticipating it might be a jig and a minnow bite just because we've had some cold weather here. We had some warm temps and then now. Goodness, it's cold here this morning. We'll be bundling up, but uh, yeah, we're cab bound on today's show. Maybe too, Tim, describe what we're doing here because a lot of times when we've been up here in the past, you know, we're fishing a lot of rock structure. Obviously, you know, it's not that far after the opener, we're shallow. And yeah, we're not fishing rocks. No, you know, this is a, there's a lot of weeds in here. Some, you can see some cattails that are alongside the shoreline there. These fish are in three to, I don't know, eight feet of water for the most part, but they're in the shallow waters and we're just pitching jigs as about as far back as from the boat as you can go. Yeah, basically just a sand flat in front of us, some scattered weeds. There's a little bit of scattered rock in here, but it's just a shallow sand bay is more or less what we're fishing. Yeah. Further you get away from the shore, then there's a little deeper water and some more rock structure. But they're liking these bays. They're coming in here to warm up the feed. And uh, water temperatures again, what are they, 55, something like that yeah, right mid now? mid-50s. Yeah, mid-50s. And just throwing some tungsten jigs into, with some shine, tip with shiners into that shallow water. And, but another thing that, uh, Jason, that we really like to do this time of year in the shallow water is try some big baits. You know, a lot of people like to go with finesse and they use these small little baits, but I think these big baits, big profile baits, tend to attract a few more fish. So, uh, and, and some bigger fish, some nicer fish. So don't be afraid to throw some bigger baits with it. Oh, oh, oh there's one right there. There's a couple of them here, right, right off this angle here. Where at? Okay. Right where I cast it, yeah. <laughs> maybe a little bit to the left. <laughs> right there, huh? <laughs> oh, there's, there's a fish. This feels like a good fish, Tim. Isn't that on him? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a good fish. Nice walleye. Big walleye. Oh, isn't that pretty? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, where are you going? Get in here, bud. Head first. Fish yeah. has been watching too many small malts. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's got his oh, small wow. malt is his neighbor. Nice Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Nice fish. Wow. All right. That's a gorgeous fish, Tim. Boy. Look at this walleye. Golly. They are just so pretty up here. Look at that. That is a beauty. That is a beautiful fish. Coming out of about five feet of water. Just yeah, probably closer to seven. Actually, I oh, saw yeah. those fish on the active target just a touch out. About seven, eight feet of water, but yeah, just gorgeous. Perfect. Gorgeous. We'll get her in the water. Oh, look at that pose. There she goes. And that's just classic northern Minnesota fishing. Jigging a minnow. And we're just spot locking and just fan casting around the boat, kind of surrounded by sand flats. And these fish are moving around a lot. That's one thing that we're noticing is these fish are moving, but just a, either a shine or a rainbow. And here I'll show you this jig here. This has been a hot seller at the retailers. That's a Northland tungsten jig. See, it's got that big red eye on it. And why tungsten? I mean, we're only in five, seven feet of water. Here's the deal. You know, we're using monofilament, which I think monofilament has caused that jig to glide and float a little bit more, which I like to use monofilament when I'm pitching shallow with a jig and a minnow. But the tungsten, I think, just increases the sensitivity and says that we're hitting weed clumps, we're hitting a little bit of rock, we're hitting just, you know, we're making that bottom contact and it's just a slow drag. We're not popping it way up off the bottom. And so we're making quite a bit of bottom contact. That's just an eighth ounce jig. But I believe what tungsten does is it really increases the sensitivity where it's so much easier to tell the difference between a fish and any type of bottom contact. You know, a lot of times, you know, you just get a little bit of weight on the rod and you're, you know, you're swinging into everything. Whereas with 
the tungsten, I think it just increases the sensitivity so much, and I think that's what people love about it, but it's much easier to tell the difference between a fish in whatever else you might contact on the bottom, but that was a great fish. That's a great fish. <laughs> fun. <laughs> Let's fun get some is, more, huh? Fun is right. It doesn't get any better than this. Six pound mono and a jig of the walleye in five to seven feet of water casting. Can't beat that. Life is good. <laughs> You know, it's right around Memorial Day weekend, and it's kind of that magical time of the year where, where the fishing can fire up in a lot of different places. But, you know, you come up here, <laughs> that water temperature starts getting close to 60 degrees, and, and it's just a deal where if you ever have fantasies of having, you know, that 50 to 100 fish per boat day, you know, this is a situation where you can just catch a lot of fish. You know, these fish are sucked up in these shallow bays. And, you know, we've talked about this lake in the past, how there's so much structure. You look at a topographical map of these lakes up here. Cabotogam in particular just has endless amounts of structure. You know, rock, offshore reefs, points. I mean, it just, islands, it's just endless. But you look at the number of shallow sandy bays and it's kind of confined, you know, and, and sometimes it might be just shallow sand in, in a reef or an island complex, but shallow sand is a ticket you find the shallow sand it feels like every fish in the lake is is up in this warm water and so it's just an opportunity to catch a lot of fish here's one right here oh <laughs> love that love that feel let me know if you need a net yeah it's a good fish all right here i'll assist you well, I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. There we go. That'll work. Well, when they're coming up and that sun's on them fishing under the water, they are beautiful. They show their gold off, don't they? Yeah, Man. they do. Yes, nice. Oh, yeah. Little honey buddy right here. I love it. Oh, sea dog. Gotta love that. Gotta love this time of year, too. Still catching fairly shallow, pitching a jig, that's as good as it gets. I know. They start opening that mouth and shaking it when they're coming to the boat, trying to spit that hook and that old gold flashes. And, oh man. You start getting hungry just thinking about it. <laughs> well, well, thank you, girl. So in the spring of the year, the walleyes are generally looking for this shallow water. They just come off of spawn uh, we are spawn usually on Cabotogam is uh, 1st of May to maybe the 10th of May, somewhere in there. And then they like to head up into the shallow bays uh, where the sand and the weeds are. They're warming up and they're also ca uh, chasing uh, perch minnows and other baits. Generally speaking, what we'll do is we'll run with monofilament line with a maybe an 8th ounce or 16th ounce jig tipped with a nice shiner minnow or a, a nice long uh, paddle tail or plastic. And we'll pitch 40, 45 feet from the boat if we have to and fan cast all around that boat and then we'll drag it back to the boat. And as we're doing that, we're popping it back. That's when we get that chase and that big uh, strike that uh, we're all looking for. Here's one. Got him? Yeah, same thing, I think. Oh, a little better. Might need a net on this one, Jason. All right, all right, I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah, this is a little better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Tim. Come here, girlfriend. There we go. There we go. Nice. Yeah. Boy, I just can't get over how golden they are. Aren't they? Yeah, that's a beautiful looking walleye right there. Sitting here dealing in this, what, six, seven feet of water? Just really nice, nice size eater fish. A little bit, this might be a little bit too big to be an eater, but just a handy little fish right there. Got that nice tungsten jig sticking right there. Right in the top of the mouth, bad boy, right there. Well, we can get that jig out of there. Yeah. Thanks for the fun, girl. I'll let you back. 
Don't you just love it when they see that water and you're putting them right in there? Just wham, they're gone. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't like captivity. Do no, they? <laughs> uh, they're gone. <laughs> There we go. Got him. How's that feel? Uh, just an eater. Excellent. I'll just bolt flip them. That's a good eater, though. That is. This would be the shore lunch fish, you know what? Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, that might be. Yeah. <laughs> I, might, I might have broke the line. <laughs> yeah, Got yeah. lucky. That's a nice fish, nice though. Aren't they just fish. gorgeous? Beautiful. You know, we did that, too. Remember that one year we did the shore lunch up here? Yeah. We just pulled up onto a point and come up here you're not in Canada but it feels an awful like it feels like you're in Canada I mean golden walleyes no development you know just beautiful up here really a cool part of the world we're going up into these bays and you know it's a water temperature deal I mean it's definitely warmer you know that sun's beating down on that sand you know and not only are we catching walleyes you know we're just it seems like we're catching everything I mean it's like there's a lot of fish stacked up in these bays, you know, you got some wind blowing in some of these spots, maybe some current moving through some of these spots, you know, between islands and between maybe a point and an island. You're just looking for just a shallow sand flat with some, with some clumps of weeds growing on it, maybe a little bit of rock scattered on it. But here's what's interesting. You know, you could go into these places with just a anchor and fan cast around the boat and you're going to catch plenty of fish, okay? But when you can use forward facing sonar, where you know the fish are there and you can actually hunt them down. Oh, there's four fish there and cast right to them. It's stupid how many fish you catch. I mean, it's like, I mean I've seen a lot of things in fishing, a lot of technology, a lot of changes, and I don't know if, if I've seen anything so profound where, you know, you're just, oh, there's three fish and just cast and catch it. I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. But you don't need that technology to catch fish up here. We've caught fish without that technology for years, okay? But you just have to find the right location. So find that flat, those flats, the sand, just gradual flats. Maybe it's in a bay, maybe it's off of an island, an island at a point, whatever it is. Getting these locations, but the biggest thing is cast or pitch. You know, you might have a hard time catching fish below the boat in six, seven, eight feet of water out here. And so cast, cast around the boat until you find fish. And you do that right now and you're gonna find fish. Yeah. You got one? Yeah. All right. Good one? That's like kind of what we've been catching. All right. They're all good when you're holding a jig oh, around your man. Hand, though, huh? Yeah. Is that fair to say? Oh. Every walleye on six pound test in a jig is a good walleye. Oh man, nice. Yeah. It's like uh, you just want to say go ahead and get the oil hot. <laughs> yeah. Get the oil well, hot. A great eater. We might have to do that, Tim. We keep talking about it. I know. <laughs> we might have to fire that live well up. I'm just starting to... Yeah. Do we hungry, keep a few? The hungrier I get through this day. We keep... Yeah. <laughs> the more I want to keep these fish. Fire up the live well, Tim. <laughs> oh, no. I got him. Hey, I'm going to catch a second one. <laughs> that made that fish jump, huh? Fire up the live well? <laughs> yeah. Fire up the live well. Boom, he's in the water. He goes... Oh, geez, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going to give you a pardon anyway, buddy. That is a beautiful fish. That is. You know, when you start fishing these shallow flats and bays where it's, you know, you might be sitting in six to eight feet of water and you're casting into three, uh, three feet, you kind of want to stick out into that uh, little deeper water and fan cast in there so you don't scatter these fish and scare them. Uh, with your motor and everything else so we like to sit out about six to eight feet of water cast into that three feet and it seems like they're following them out of that three foot of water and, and we're getting hits at i don't know four or five feet of water but just slightly behind the boat so make sure that when you go in there and you start uh, chasing some of these fish in the spring of the year in that shallow water keep your boat out just a little bit make sure you fan cast and throw in there just a little bit deeper uh, and bring those fish out there's one you got them yeah all right right in front of the boat yeah. All right. I'll get the net here. Need the net? Yeah. I don't know what it is, but we're going to need a net on him. All right. Nice. Yeah, nice walleye. I think that was, what, was one of those two that we saw. Oh, yeah. Boy, I hope so. Hope oh, it's yeah. Just... Nice walleye, Tim. 
Nice, 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 nice. Oh yeah. Oh, oh he's that a there's, beautiful fish. That's Kevin talking about gold right there, bud. That is wild. Yes, sir. I'm gonna take my glasses off. Oh man, come here, sis. Mm -mm. You know, Jason, they just don't make a prettier fish, do they? Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Look at that gold, just beautiful love the white color belly and gold. Oh, man. Yeah, it just swallowed that jig, didn't it? Just boop. Yeah. <laughs> she was in the mood for a little tungsten shiner, huh? Yeah. There you go. There we go. Thank you, sweetie. Saw that one on the active target, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Not real big, but okay. I saw him. That's amazing, isn't it? Just dropped right on him. Looks like there's a couple of them out there. Boy, he got he got heavy all of a sudden. Oh, that's a good fish. Yeah, nice, nice eater. Really nice fish eater. Fish is just swimming with you, wasn't it? Oh yeah, he's, yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. 18 inch, 18 inch fish. Good fish. Nice job. Yeah, let's keep a feel. We keep talking about it, and I keep thinking about it. And uh, the hungrier we get, the yeah. The day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay then. Pop right out of there. Let's see what this yeah, is. Yeah, that's here. that's just it doesn't get any better. Yeah, no, that's just a nice 17 and a half. Or just think of the meal that we've tossed back, you know. We're gonna eat a few fish, let's do it right. That's the right size. Yep. Let's I go agree. ahead and throw three in there or something. Yeah, yeah that's okay. all we need. Three right or four? Here. Yep. All right, yeah, buddy. You know, so we only have a half hour show. You know, normally it's, you know, we joke that, you know, we only need, you know, 10 to a dozen fish for a great show. You know, when you take out the commercials and the, all the stuff that's in a TV show, there's only 20 minutes of footage. <laughs> you know, so, you know, sometimes you think, oh, you know, a whole entire day squished down into 20 minutes. Like, wow, no wonder you catch so many fish, okay? But this is a situation where we come out here and, Goodness, you know, could have ran out of battery, could have ran out of tape, could have ran out of minnows. I mean, it was just a deal where, you know, we probably had 50 fish. I mean, it's just one after all. Just, I mean, we hardly, I mean, it was just catching fish. I wouldn't say nonstop, but they would come in flurries. But over the course of the day, I mean, it, they just add up, you know, and just, I mean, just perfect. What, what I would call a perfect eating size fish, a, a 15 to 18 inch wall. I mean, you're just holding them in your hands all day. They're just the most beautiful golden color. Then all of a sudden we start catching all these jumbo perch, which, you know, we've caught perch out here in the past, but never like this. And we're catching a fair number of perch, like big perch. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, maybe we're gonna film a perch show instead. <laughs> you know, it's funny how fishing works, but you know, you're you're getting, you know, you're tangling up with, with pike all the time. You know, you've got the walleyes, you know, you're big small mouse you've got you know we're catching all these perch i mean but it just it was just chaos I mean, we're just we're gonna have to wash down the boat pretty good just blood all over the floor of the boat our hands are cut up i mean just just stupid good fishing there's one there you go right below the boat buddy what are we five feet of water yeah five six seven feet another good eater all right, well, since we're eating fish now, it gets a little bit more serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't the, take any chances. The hungrier we get, get the we, net uh, out. <laughs> we're starving. We like potatoes, but we don't want to eat too many potatoes, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to put the tape on this one. It's probably just a match to the last one, about 17 and a half. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. You keep looking at that all day and talking about it. Yeah, we better eat a few. <laughs> I got one here, too. You got one on? Yep. There's a pretty good pile of fish in here. Well, I don't know. We caught a dozen or more this this size right here recently. And yeah. 
Now we've decided to go ahead and eat a few. You gonna need the net on him too? Yeah, you know what, I'll try boat flipping it. Yeah, flip him in. Just a, this would be a perfect time for the, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> nice matching 17 inch pair. We only need a couple more of these and we're full for the week. Yeah, that's life. good, huh? That's good. Yeah, that's good eaters. Right Show those there. in the live well and good yeah. start. Perfect. You know, due to the fact that Cabotogma is in Voyagers National Park and it's not very populated, pretty much undeveloped, there's not a lot of fishing pressure, which kind of lends to the credence that we can catch a lot of fish on any given day, spring, summer, fall. It's never a bad time to come up to Cabotogma and chase these walleyes or smallmouth or pike, perch, crappie. Regardless of the species that you're wanting to chase, pretty much Cabotogma has it in a an abundance of numbers so it is the most beautiful scenery you ever have come up here and have a blast chasing these fish and staying at one of these great resorts that we have on this lake